for many years, we didn't have an NFL team. We felt slighted. And suddenly in 1976, we get the Seahawks. Usually you have this stud that everybody roots for. But we don't get that big stud. We get Steve Largent. Five foot nine, 185 pound guy that doesn't fit the Goliath size athlete that you're used to. We get David. He lays out and catches those passes like nobody I have ever seen. This run played with such a fury. Steve will put that under his mantle, right on the higher foot. He was our hero. A guy that broke every major receiving record. At five foot nine, 185 pounds. When is football life gonna do a documentary on this guy? You gonna be a football player when you grow up? Today is the best day of your life. Believe me. Give it. me eight years of daylight. That's the greatest leader I've ever known. What a ride it's been. The force was with Steve. There was something about him that's unexplainable. Can the Seahawks repeat? Clock still moving down to 36. Yeah. Lynch in the backfield. Russell looks, throws inside. Oh my God! So, Steve, tell me how you're feeling now about all that Super Bowl stuff. I've never seen you be so upset about one play of a game. I'm not thinking about it all the time. Now. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> but it's still very painful. Just watching it was tough. Make sure you don't cut my hair too short. <laughs> Or your ear. Or my ear. <laughs> as good as the Seahawks are, favorites to win the Super Bowl again, Steve Largent is still front and center. What he did for the city and the start of the franchise still carries on. It was this cute little expansion franchise, didn't win a lot many games, but he was amazing. From their birth in 1976, Steve Largent gave the Seattle Seahawks an identity. Large, it was another circus cat to get the ball anywhere near him, and he hangs on to it. When he retired in 1989, Largen had amassed more catches for more yards and more touchdowns than any receiver in history. Pro Football Hall of Famer from Seattle, Steve Largen. Yet when he was growing up in Oklahoma, the founding father of the Seahawks began life without a father of his own. My story, like so many others, is a story of people who believed in me against all the evidence. Their influence filled a hollowness in my own life I could not explain or even understand. When I was six years old, my parents were divorced and my dad left. I basically never saw him again. He was just gone. It's devastating to come out of that kind of situation. I can just remember many times crying myself to sleep. There it is. It's been a long time. My dad leaving definitely sculpted my life in that it created a very insecure kid in me. I think I still probably don't totally understand what that's like. There were only two times that he saw his dad until he was playing professional football. After Kyle was born, Steve said to me, I can't believe my dad could walk out on me. It went from bad to worse. My mom remarried and her next husband's my stepfather was a chronic alcoholic there were occasions when to my mom it got physical i was about a sophomore and my mom came crying in tears she said help me tell me what i should do and i'm thinking i'm 15 years old i don't know what the heck you should do when a child grows up today without a father there's an empty place where someone must stand if no one takes that place 
A child can live in a shadow all their lives. I was always looking for a father figure. I, I wouldn't have known it, but I know that now, that that's what I was looking for. Those guys in my life were my coaches. I was driven by the accolades that I got from the football field. Nobody lavished Largent with more praise than his offensive coordinator at the University of Tulsa. Jerry Rome ignored Largent's physical limitations and made him the focal point of his offense. Junior and senior year, he caught 14 and 15 touchdown passes, led the nation. I touted him to everybody that came around, all the scouts. I got the best receiver in the country here. He was undersized, he wasn't fast. He was labeled as a slow white guy. The Tulsa receiver's 4-6-40 time was too slow for the NFL. In the 1976 draft, Largent slipped to the fourth round before being selected by the Houston Oilers. I did not have a good training camp. The cornerbacks were just beating the tar out of the receivers. I was really struggling with that. And so at the end of six weeks, Bum Phillips called me into his office. All I heard was, we're going to let you go now. And then it was blah, 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 blah. My whole world had gotten uh, very confused. I felt pretty assured that I could make this team. And to learn otherwise, was it was really crushing to me. Largent's NFL career should have ended there. But Jerry Rome had landed a job with the expansion Seahawks and desperately needed a receiver. Alvis, I'm going to shoot you if you don't learn the raps. Jerry pulled me aside. Our receiver's coming in here. His name is Steve Largent. Oh, you know, and you could just see his eyes light up. Jerry said, okay, hey, Steve, get in. And he called split right, 76. He goes, just, just call it. He'll know what to do. Sure enough, Steve just went right to the adjustment. I threw him the ball. He dropped it. He couldn't run. He dropped passes, ball hit him in the head. He was terrible. Everybody's looking at me laughing. I had coaches come over and go, that's your boy, huh? I said, Steve, what's going on? That wasn't you. He goes, Jerry, I have not slept a wink in nine days. He said, you know my situation at home. He's supporting the family. He's raising his brothers. He says, if I don't make it, we don't have any money. I says, you've made the team. 17 days later, the Seahawks played the first game in franchise history. Steve didn't start. It's a guy named Don Clune. Largent came in during that game against St. Louis, throws himself out there, lay flat out. Hit the ground, literally face first. All along, nobody really gave him a chance. You could not write it up any better. Coming up. Zorn rolling back to pass. Now lobs one deep for Lodge. He makes the grab. To have us sing, he was kind of excited about it. Sings like a bird. He was thinking that he was going to be pretty good at this. Football was Steve Largent's escape from the father who abandoned him. It also introduced him to a lifelong friend, the Seahawks' first quarterback, Jim Zorn. Jim's left-handed, and I think left-handed people are basically different. That's right. You know, they're, just, they're weird. <laughs> there was a chemistry. He and Jim just really formed a bond very quickly. Both Christians, both family guys. Jim used to make these sailboats in a bottle, and Steve, that bothered the heck out of him. Why are you doing that and taking so much time doing that? And they would have their little arguments like a married couple. Steve, he's just kind of in his own world. He's out there. Earth to Steve. Good draw with Zorn rolling back to pass off the pick. Looks once, now lobs one deeper for and he's wide open. He's got an ability to adjust to the football that 
makes me look good. I think our friendship made it possible to communicate a lot better and trust each other. What would you say Steve's best assets are as a receiver? He has real quick moves. He makes adjustments being as smart as he is. You could be Spider-Man and play defensive back and you can't guard against that. Don't take that to your head, son. Right, Jimmy, you forgot to tell him about my hands. And he's got great hands. <laughs> We just had a really special relationship that really went way beyond just football. We did all kinds of crazy stuff together. We went fishing together, we'd hunt together, we climbed Mount Rainier and, and uh, we climbed to the very top. You know, it was windy and cold and snow was on the ground and it was July. Jim actually brought a football. We played catch up on the top of Mount Rainier. Zorn to Largent was in rarefied air. In their first four seasons, no quarterback and wide receiver combined for more touchdowns. Get out of the way. They arrive for work in a 1972 Volkswagen. The driver is Jim Zorn. His accomplice, Steve Largent. Together, they just may become the most productive passing combination ever to play the game. The NFL is loaded with a whole lot of dynamite passing combinations. But I tell you, if I were a defensive back, this is one combination I wouldn't want to mess with. Zorn runs out on a sprint draw toward his right side, being pursued by Kenny Kennard. He throws the ball deep down the right side. Large and wide open at the 10. He's got it. Touchdown, Seahawks! Why do you, why do you plan all this stuff? Large and Zorn for the Seahawks was an identity. Fans came out to see them play. They didn't come out to see an expansion team. They came out for excitement. And whether we won or lost, they knew they were going to see excitement. So the King Dome rocked. Zorn draws to Lodge and recruited the 25 of Buffalo. He's on his way. He'll never get him. Touchdown, Seahawks. The Zorn to Large and Bromance left fans sleepless in Seattle. And advertisers milked their wholesome persona for all it was worth. The Washington Dairy Farmers asked Jim and myself to do this commercial. We just really got into it. And now, the Dairy Farmers Employer of Washington with Jim Zorn and Steve Largent. Show your stuff and drink milk. Here's lots of calcium, protein and vitamins. To have us sing, he was kind of excited about it. He was thinking that he was going to be pretty good at this. Whoever you are, show your stuff and drink milk. They cancel that campaign, maybe due to mine or Steve's singing. We got a lot of kidding. In a lot of ways, it was a good fit for who we were as people. This is the hard stuff, isn't it? Oh, yeah. It's the real deal. Not too fast, Steve. Mm. You got an empty stomach. Mm, I know. We were always seen as the clean-cut guys that didn't get in trouble. We encouraged that kind of behavior that was positive. I've never seen another friendship like it. They get together and it's like they never missed a beat. It hasn't weakened over time, it's just gotten stronger. It's a way to move. Still got it. Football was what knit us together originally. And I throw the ball and he catches it, that's all. Our common faith and our common view of the world created an inseparable relationship that we have with one another. I would say he's my best friend today. Coming up. The catches were just, for a guy who's too short to be able to play, all he does is make the plays. He's like Yoda, size matters, no? Hmm? We had a Halloween party about a thousand years ago. He actually came to the Halloween party as Princess Leia. Quite a fetching Princess Leia, I might add. And Terry, his wife, was Yoda. But Yoda seemed to stick more for Steve. He kind of had the, the schnoz, the face kind of had that look of Yoda to it. From then on, that's what we called him. Yoda, uh, the Jedi Master. Like George Lucas's all-knowing sage, Steve Largent 
was a master of the Jedi mind trick. The Force was with Steve. He was magical. There was something about him um, that's unexplainable. Largent is not known to be able to run away from people. They had Largent wrapped up and then couldn't make the tackle. The thing that amazed me about him is how open he would get. You'd watch these, these plays and there's Largent all by himself. It's like, shouldn't somebody be covering this guy? He'll put you to sleep and then take you deep. He can move his arms and looks like he's running when he's not going place. But when he came out of that break, he was flying. Largent with another stat. Boy, that guy doesn't have great speed, but he runs very disciplined patterns. What I learned from Steve Largent is how precise he ran his routes. When John Bostick had no clue on that, he was turned about every way you could turn before he finally broke towards Steve Largent on the sideline. Didn't have blazing speed, but it was all about being able to get out of your guts without taking too many steps and get that separation from the defensive back. Hangs one way up in the air for Largent. People don't think he's fast, but he's fast. A lot of receivers run a 4-3-40, but they can't run routes, and they can't come out of routes. I could get into a route and out of a route without losing any speed. Double coverage on him, turn two men around. I was quicker than a lot of guys that had a lot faster straight ahead speed. Boy, how many big catches has Steve Largent made this afternoon? So many, we can't count them. Steve Largent is the greatest football player, in my opinion, uh, of all time, and uh, he deserves everything that he can get. Then I'll give him Seattle. When you retire and own all of the receiving records, think about that. All of the receiving records in the National Football League. That's saying something, and Steve Largent did that. He set so many records when I was throwing to him, I, I just wasn't aware of it. Neither was Steve. Most career receptions. Steve Largent has just made his 751st reception, a new receiving record. Then he had 100 touchdowns. There it is! It's touchdown Seahawks! That long pursuit of Tom Hudson in the NFL is over. Because he's so short, he made it look like it was a real high throw, and he caught it and fell in the end zone. Patented Steve Largent catch, just keeping his feet down. What a great one to break the record on. He's like the bumblebee. The bumblebee's got a big body and small wings. Physics says he shouldn't be able to fly. If you put him in the NFL's computer, he fails. Nobody told this guy that he couldn't catch the ball the way he did. Taking nothing away from Odell Beckham. That was an amazing catch you made last season. Wow, what a catch by the rookie! Ridiculous! If Largent had worn the gloves they wear today, he would have caught with one finger. A lot of players depend on attacking five gloves to keep the ball in their hands, so they don't really know how to catch. Steve Largent never wore gloves, and he was the best pass catching receiver that I ever played with or against. Steve Largent owns the finest pair of hands in football. The secret to those hands was Yoda's power to channel the Force. Pull. Oh. I had began doing trap and skeet shooting. The guy that I was out there shooting with, what he tried to do was watch not the skeet, but the front edge of the skeet. Oh, I smoked it. And so I thought, that should be applicable to what I do as a football player. Everybody always would say, well, keep your eye on the ball, keep your eye on the ball. What I would say is keep your eye on the tip of the ball. That became my mantra. 
narrowing the focus of your concentration so that you're not watching a football, you're watching a tip of a football. It really was effective. It was immensely helpful. The catches were just, how did he come down with that? For a guy who's got no speed, he's too short to be able to play. All he does is make the play. He's like Yoda. Size matters, no? Steve was the Jedi Master. It's an incredible catch! If you ever watch Yoda, what was it? Magic. That was Steve Larkin. The deflected away for a touchdown. Steve Larkin was right there. He played me. Yoda. It's amazing how he could just snatch the ball out of the air. I idolized him. And I still do. George or not, there's no try. defied gravity. They defied all the laws of reason and physics. He's probably more Yoda than we think. Coming up. We've waited a long, long time, too long. Could Yoda's magic get the Seahawks to the Super Bowl? The Seahawks are going to play in the AFC Championship game. I feel very strongly that the Seattle Seahawks exist for one reason, and that's to win. Whatever it takes to win, and that's the bottom line. When Chuck Knox was named head coach in 1983, his first big decision was to break up Zorn to Largent. That mid-season, Jim Zorn was struggling. Chuck Knox goes to this guy named Dave Craig. Jim Zorn is reduced to a cheerleader on the sideline. It was extremely difficult for Steve because it was Jim Zorn, his best friend. Steve Largent, close friend of Zorn, a lot of things together, including mountain climbing. It was really hard. My personal sentiments didn't matter. It didn't matter how much I liked Jim or how well we worked together. I would have made a different decision, but it wasn't my decision to make. For Steve and Terry, Nothing had changed as long as this Dave Craig kept throwing the passes. Steve, Steve, get it. Steve's actual game didn't need to change. For Jim and I, the bottom had just fallen out. It just didn't seem right. I was rooming with Steve. He still was playing. And now he had to be excited about these games with another QB. All Steve cared about was winning, and I wasn't trying to, you know, be Steve's best friend. I just wanted to be the best quarterback I could be for our team. I just threw it and he caught it. When Dave Craig took over, something funny happened. The Seattle Seahawks started to win. We had a chance to enter the NFL playoffs for the first time ever. It was absolutely exhilarating. Craig, a play fake back to pass, throwing deep on the right side. Largent's in front. This is how many times touchdown, Seahawks! Great route. Steve Largent has been running down routes all afternoon, setting up those defensive backs. We've waited a long, long time, too long, and uh, our fans have too. I'm just elated for them. Yeah, you know, we didn't know what the heck we were doing, but it was a lot of fun. And this is indeed a great day for the city of Seattle. For the first time in their eight-year history, the Seattle Seahawks in the playoffs. In the wild card playoff, Yoda torched one of the finest corners in the game. Hey, hey, hey. Back to pass goes Craig. Austin in the end zone. Touchdown Seahawks for Largent. Steve Largent beating Louie Ryan on an inside move to the post. He turned Louie Ryan around. You can pack your bags for Miami. Seahawks have won the AFC you really felt some of the things that the Seahawks feel today about being uh, one of the elite teams. In Miami, Don Shula's Dolphins were 17 and a half point favorites. 
It was the biggest game the Seahawks had ever played. And Steve Largent had the worst game of his career. 91 consecutive games. He's got a pass. Today he has no catches. The Dolphins' killer B defense under Don Shula had done a masterful job. <laughs> back through the play-by-play. -play. It's amazing the number of times that Craig went to Largent, ball batted down. Largent unable to get to pass. They're going to make sure Steve Largent does not catch a pass today. He goes three quarters without a catch. Largent still without a reception. The Seahawks led 17-13 with less than five minutes remaining. Craig tried Largent one more time. That was the closest we ever got to a Super Bowl. We're beating them all game and they pull ahead of us. We have no chance to beat this team. Great players do great things when it matters the most, and he did. Seahawks trail the Dolphins 20 to 17. This is the entire season now resting on this next drive. Now let's see if this interception has affected him. Oh, he knows what Makes this great catch to keep the drive going. I thought he broke both of his knees. It was do or die. I mean, we had to score. They know we're going to try to throw the ball to him. We call 693. The nine is a post corner. It's the hardest thing to run. Down the stretch, when we went to him, he made a catch that will go down in the annals of Seahawks history as one of the all-time great catches. He beat double coverage. For 57 minutes, the Dolphins have been able to shut Largent down. Oh, that's a great batter. When Judson looked back at the quarterback, that's when Largent breaks. Look at that batter. One of the best routes he ever ran. A post corner against bracket coverage, it's, uh, it's hard to do. It's exciting, definitely the biggest victory that I've ever been involved in, and, and uh, I'm feeling real good right now. That was the closest Steve Largent ever came to a championship. It is disappointing. I would say it's the one thing in my career that is missing, uh, that I never got to play the Super Bowl. As the years go on, that disappointment loses a little bit of its sting. Coming up. Me. The biggest surprise of Steve Largent's life. The doctor said, Steve, we might have a problem here. I was crushed. When I was six years old, my dad left. I basically never saw him again. I can just remember many times crying myself to sleep and saying to myself, when I have a family, it will never be like this. Have a good day. Mm -hmm. Can I get a kiss, too? Mm -hmm. Love you. I didn't know how to be a dad because I'd never done it before, and I'd never seen one. Terry, these guys need a coat. <laughs> I'm sure I did it wrong a lot of times. Downtown. Freddie Brown. Oh, sorry. <laughs> sorry, Kelly. It was, uh, it was a challenge. Okay. It's amazing that he can come from what he came from and become such a great father. Want me to pull your tooth out? He would throw all the other stuff away as long as he still got to be dad and, and have a relationship with us. He braids hair. Kids or 
He likes doing it, but I don't know that he's any good at it. There you go. Steve Largent was an all-pro dad. Then the birth of his fourth child threw him for a loss. That was uh, probably one of the most difficult days of my life. We were in the same room and the same doctor and the same nurses as we'd had the previous three times. Kramer came out. The doctor said, we have a little defect here. The hard part for me was really watching Steve kind of go off in the corner of a room and sob. I'd never heard of spina bifida, and now my son's born with spina bifida. Your mind just flashes forward. You start thinking about all the things you're not going to be able to do with your son because he's handicapped. I just turn inward. I don't want to hear about it. I don't want to talk about it. I, and I don't want anybody's help. Stay away from me. My dad wasn't just good at something. He was great at something. Pretty much everything he did, he succeeded at. Kramer humbled him. Get those bubbles. <laughs> it brought him back down to earth and made him realize life isn't always easy. That transfer between, Lord, why did this happen to me, to, oh my gosh, Kramer is a great kid. Turning the focus off of how I feel about it and turning the focus on celebrating his life was really a result of Terry. This is an eating machine. We tend to judge people by how they look or by their athletic ability. People are valuable for a lot more things than, than beauty. On the field, Largent could still catch anything, no matter what the circumstances. After playing football for as long as I have, you learn to protect yourself, and it's almost like a gymnast where you know how to land on the turf. I wasn't expecting he would be hurt badly. When I would see him make a hard catch, I never even had a thought that he would come up hurt from that. It was a 12-yard post route in Denver. Dave Craig didn't look off the safety. Craig on a play fake to Warner, back to pass, drills one up the right side. It hit me right in the hands, and Mike Harden hit me right in the face with his forearm. And I was out before I hit the ground. Largent is down after taking that hard shot to the head by Harden. And boy, his head just snapped right back. Steve Largent took a mean, mean look. You don't lead a guy into the middle like that. That was one of the more violent collisions I've seen. Mike Harden broke a couple of his teeth off. Wicked. Cheap shot, in my estimation. The league fined Mike Harden for it. And Steve Largent right now is laying on his back at the 40-yard line. You know, his eyes are still closed. I think he's out on the field. I was watching on TV with my mom. He got knocked unconscious. And I think we were I think we were pretty concerned. He was out for five minutes. I remember being scared. Fourteen weeks later, Largent faced Mike Harden again. Neither logic nor reason can explain what happened next. Craig looking at Blitz direction, throws it to him too long and picked up by Harden. Mike Harden intercepts a pass. You're watching this play. In comes this streak, and it's Steve Largent. Not only levels Harden, forces a fumble, and recovers it. Have you ever seen a movie and everything kind of fast forwards to that moment, and then all of a sudden it's in slow motion? I've never seen Steve get up and talk smack to somebody, but he did that one. Paybacks are heck in this business. He has good karma. Perfect redemption. That's so Yoda. Steve will want to put that over his mantle, right on the fireplace. That's better than any touchdown catch he's ever made. That was the play, I would say, is my favorite play of my NFL career. A tackle 
not a not a catch. Too slow, too short, too small. Nothing kept Steve Largent down, and he never allowed his son to give up. It wasn't, oh Kramer, you know, we, we feel so bad for you. Nobody would help him into the car. Nobody would care that he was slower and couldn't feel the bottom of his feet. Are you gonna walk? The first day he came into our lives, I, I was crying, and they were, uh, you know, tears of bitterness. Now, when he learns to do something that people said he might not be able to do, the tears are a joy. Okay, hey, Kramer, who do you think would be the first one to catch a fish? Me. You? Yeah. But well, why do you think you are? Because I have a crankbait. His dad, he was an alcoholic and he was abusive. That was one of the things that fueled my dad to be who he is today. I don't think he ever viewed himself as a kid with a handicap. He's always viewed himself as a doer, as a guy that, you know, there's no holds barred. Dad, I got a giant. Whoa! He's a monster. <laughs> Largent's football career was coming to an end, but Yoda was destined to compete in another arena. I think he could have been president of the United States. He came in with every card you could play. The emotions here at the Kingdom are going to be running high this afternoon because Steve Larkin is saying goodbye today to pro football. All I can really say is uh, thank you for my family and God bless and have a Merry Christmas. Thank you. When I retired, and I said there's two things I know for sure I'll never do. I'll never coach and I'll never be in politics. Terry was the one that was really whispering in my ear. I think you really need to run for office. They said he was too small, too slow, but they couldn't measure his heart or his will to succeed. Steve Largent. I just thought maybe the Lord had given him this platform that he got through football to be used somewhere else. Steve Largent, Congress. He came in as a rock star. When you're on a Wheaties box, you're like in a category by yourself. You were voted number one heartthrob on Capitol Hill. So what does it take to, to win a vote like that? There's only one person I want to be a heartthrob to, and that's been, uh, that's my wife of the last 26 years. He was a Hall of Fame football player. They were going to make him a star, they being the, uh, the, the power players of the Republican Party. If wholesomeness is what America wants in a politician, Hi, Steve. Steve Largent, good to see you. Steve Largent has it. He rejected that. He was never saying, vote for me, vote for me. And by being quiet and having character, people realized that he was the type of guy we wanted to lead us into battle. If I could vote for one person for president, it would be Steve. Largent was named one of People Magazine's most beautiful people. And in 2002, after four terms in Congress, he ran for governor of Oklahoma. He could have won easily just by being a traditional politician. There were a lot of opportunities for him to take cheap shots that would propel his career, and he never did it to his detriment because they took cheap shots at him. Steve Largent, he doesn't want us to see. The one he wishes we hadn't. That's bullshit. Steve Largent, after admitting he was in Idaho playing hooky on 9-11. All the charges against Steve were ridiculous. Nobody ever questioned Steve's patriotism. It was really below the belt. The football oh. hero refused to fight yeah, back did, uh, and was up? dogged by a chicken issue. As it turned out, there was an initiative on the ballot to end cockfighting. Cockfighting should be banned in Oklahoma. But cockfighting was an issue that was, was out there. For some reason, it was on this, this ballot. When you start talking about cockfighting, that's an emotional issue. Yeah, that's like abortion and gun control with gasoline thrown on it. He took a position to ban it, uh, which, which didn't make him popular. I never heard of anybody going to a cockfight. I said, I don't think any state needs to legalize cockfighting. In some of the rural counties, apparently that was a reason to vote against me. Everybody thought he was going to win. I didn't even vote. Don't tell him that. 
election day, started listening to the results. It's like, oh, maybe I should have gone and voted. This one was not supposed to be close. Not supposed to Alabama be close was. at all. Steve Largent, who was the congressman and former NFL star, you would think it would have been a walk for him. Not the case here. Larger than expected turnout in cockfighting country swung the election. Largent lost by less than 7,000 votes. I think my dad was hurt pretty bad by that loss. It was just something that he was positive the Lord was telling him he was supposed to do. When he was told no by Oklahoma, it really affected his pride. He said he always thought that God had wanted him to be the next governor of the state of Oklahoma. And he came to realize that God had only wanted him to run for governor of the state of Oklahoma. I went through a panoply of emotions from being angry, disappointed, frustrated, hurt, crying. I cried all the way from driving from Oklahoma City back to Tulsa. I hadn't felt that um, sad about a result since, since I'd been cut by the Houston Oilers. Terry and I said this to each other a million times. For us, it was better not to win because now we don't have the pressure of having a high stakes job, being very visible all of the time. We went to being nobody again. Now, ah. Uh. The simple message about Steve Largent's life is that a good guy can finish first. All along, nobody really gave him a chance to be a great football player or to accomplish things in life. But Steve Largent knew that he could. Long, long ago, in a stadium far, far away, his teammates called Steve Largent Yoda. He had the force. His determination to escape the dark side of his childhood. When a child grows up without a father, a child can live in a shadow all their lives. But if someone takes that place, a child can escape the shadows. The really heroic people are not those who break records. The really heroic people are those who can mend a broken spirit. Just because of the number of divorces and single parent families, there's more of me in the world today than ever before. A lot of kids that are hurting the Steve Largents of the world are searching for love and searching for meaning. One of the things that football taught me is the one thing you can't give up on is yourself. 